Princess Diana was the people's princess, loved by millions for her openness, sense of style, and devotion to humanity. But her busy and colorful life became the subject of speculation for tabloids that spied on her every move. We will tell you about the men in Diana's life who allowed her to break free from Buckingham Palace and her burdensome marriage to Prince Charles. Barry Manneke Diana was 20 years old when she married Prince Charles. By modern standards, she was just a young girl. Leaving her family for the stiff and stark embellishment of the royal palace, Diana found a true friend in her bodyguard, Barry Manneke. Barry was 14 years older than Diana, and he was married. But due to his maturity, he became her support and exactly the man with whom Diana could share her worries about Charles. He was the greatest fellow I have ever had. I was always waiting around trying to see him. Um, I just, you know, I wore my heart on my sleeve. I was only happy when he was around, Diana told her friend and voice coach, Peter Settlin, in 1991. She was so attached to her bodyguard that she was ready to abandon everything and leave to the edge of the world with him. Did she ever think that the royal family would let her take the heirs to the crown away from the palace? Was she ready to leave her kids? I was quite happy to give it all up. Just go off and live with him. Can you believe it? She said. For the little girl inside the princess, Barry was a strong and wise father she could rely on. Some reports say that Barry felt free to flirt with Diana in front of servants. One time, when she wore a tight miniskirt, she asked Barry's opinion. Do I look all right? She asked him. Sensational, as you know you do. I could quite fancy you myself, he replied. Despite that Prince Charles's security chief once spotted Diana and Barry in a compromising situation, Diana always denied sexual intercourse with Barry. A year later, when he was transferred from royal to diplomatic protection, Barry passed away in a car crash. The princess stated more than once that in her opinion, the crash was set up by the security service, since Barry knew too much about her and Prince Charles. James Hewitt James Hewitt was the only of Princess Diana's lovers whom she spoke openly about on BBC's Panorama in 1995. Hewitt was Diana's personal horse riding instructor. Young, handsome and charming, he was a strong contrast to Prince Charles, don't you think? James quickly grasped that Diana was lonely and lacked the support of a man in her life, especially after Barry Manneke left for good. James became her first solace and then her lover. Their romance blossomed at the time that Prince Charles was reported to have an affair with his current wife, Camilla Parker Bowles. Hewitt was a natural womanizer, gave her the attention and affection she relished, and then the passion she yearned for, said Princess Diana's royal protection officer, Ken Worf. As James recalls, Diana turned out to be greedy for attention, a suspicious and demanding woman. She sent him an excessive amount of love letters and presents and called him 10 times a day. Hewitt tried to sell 64 of the romantic letters, exposing the intimate details of the relationship. But the letters were stolen just before the deal was settled. Maybe there were no letters in the first place. In 1994, James co-authored a book that told about his secret affair with Lady Di. Diana confessed it was a betrayal for her. James Hewitt is considered the most pathetic and infamous man in Diana's life. He tried hard to monetize his relationship with the princess, hoping to provide a comfortable and wealthy retirement. James Gilby Rumor has it that Diana met James Gilby two years before Charles, but the romance was short-lived. They stayed friends throughout all those years. In 1992, a journalist found an audio recording of Diana's phone call to James, where she complained about her husband. The call was made on New Year's Eve, 1989. James told her he loved her and called her darling and squidgy. On the tape, Diana referred to her marriage as torture and called Charles his nibs. There were also other details that made it clear that James and Diana were more than just friends. The Sun in 1992 posted the transcript of the phone recording, but say the most intimate parts were left out. For 36 pence, anyone could ring the editing department and listen to the phone call. The whole thing turned into a scandal called Squidgygate. In contrast to James Hewitt, Gilby didn't try to earn money from his relationship with Diana. 
On the princess's request, he gave his only interview to journalist and biographer Andrew Morton, in which he told many sad details about Diana's unhappy marriage to Charles. Dr. Hasnat Khan, Mr. Wonderful, who Diana nicknamed so herself, is considered to have been her main love. The two met in the Royal Hospital in Brompton, where the princess visited patients during her humanitarian mission. The Royal Butler, Paul Burrell, told that he helped Hasnat Khan to sneak into the palace in a limo's trunk to escape publicity. According to him, Diana welcomed him in a nightdress only. Once when we were out at a pub, Diana wanted to order drinks because it was something she'd never had the chance to do before. Diana lost her mind in love and was ready to leave with him to his home country, Pakistan. The wife of Hasnat's distant cousin commented, Hasnat was very much in love with Diana, but he had really reached the end of his tether because Diana pushed him to go public and say they were a couple, and he wouldn't. Diana literally strangled him with her attention and gave him an ultimatum. Either we go public or this isn't going to happen. And now as we know, he didn't budge. Dodi Al-Fayed As a free woman, Diana had an only and last affair. After her official divorce from Charles and the painful split from Hasnat Khan, tabloids captioned Diana and Dodi Al-Fayed, the playboy and son of Egyptian billionaire Mohammed Al-Fayed. It was likely that Diana didn't have deep feelings for him and just tried to make Hasnat jealous. But Dodi was completely serious about Diana. Photos of Diana resting with her children on the yacht of the Muslim billionaire caused great dispute in Buckingham Palace. Diana and Dodi's affair was short because of a lot of controversy. Dodi's reputation of a billionaire playboy and womanizer wasn't what the royals were looking for. Unfortunately, the relationship didn't last long. Almost two months after their vacation on the yacht, they lost their lives in a fatal car crash in Paris. Dodi's father insisted for a long time that the crash was a conspiracy concocted by British intelligence, MI6. For 15 years, the People's Princess was desperately looking for love. The paradox is, she was loved by millions of her admirers, but she could not find that one person who she could ultimately be happy with. Thanks for watching. Click on the OSA icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel.